Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, my dear students, this is about the practical uh, on echo solution and acid based digestion. So, in reality, this practical has two parts one is the echo solution and then the acid based digestion. And if we move on to the next slide, the objectives of these practicals. Uh, even though there are many objectives, they mainly uh, we want to know how to prepare a standard solution. Then we want to learn how to perform titration and both in the preparation of standard and performing dilution, how to perform the calculation of the molarity. And of course, then we are going to use another technique called titration technique the titration technique we are going to learn the titration technique and to find the molarity of an unknown solution and of course if you refer to lab manual and you will find more objectives uh, that may help you in uh, writing your report in the lab report or the post lab questions let me move on to the next slide let's start when you say solution or practical and we remember that uh, we have learned that there are two types of mixtures, homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. Remember that all the homogeneous mixtures, all the homogeneous mixtures are known as solution. All the homogeneous mixtures are known as solution. And the solution has two components. You can see in the picture here, <laughs> I have prepared a solution here. How? By mixing this uh, blue color solid sample and this water that I have here. So normally, when I mix these two components, the smaller amount of component, which is called solute, and the larger component that we mix is called solvent. So whatever it is, solvent and solute together, they will give you the solution. So you can see, uh, solute and the solvent they give you solution for example uh, we can say the sea water sea water is a solution why it has solvent water in a very large quantity and you have salts you have salts in the sea water okay anyway let's proceed with that uh, there are many different types of solution. Even our air is a solution because if we take air, air is a solution. Why? Air has lots of nitrogen, 70% nitrogen, and the remaining 22% includes all the other gases like oxygen, carbon dioxide. So these oxygen, carbon dioxide are considered to be the solute, and the nitrogen is considered to be the solvent in the air. Okay, now we move on to the next point is aqueous solution or practical title say aqueous solution. Uh, when we prepare a solution, if the solvent, you can see if, if the solvent is water, if the solvent is water, then we call that solution is aqueous solution. So in that case, the air the air is not aqueous solution. You can see because the solvent is nitrogen. But when you go to the seawater, when you go to the seawater, the solvent here is water. Therefore, seawater, the seawater is an aqueous solution. Let's move on to the next part of the practical. Next slide. Okay. Now, if you go here, you can see, let me also change the color of the pen that may help you. Okay. We can, once we prepare, let's say, if we prepare a solution, if we prepare a solution by mixing a solvent, in our case, normally we take water, and then we add inside some solute. Let's say we are adding 
some solute inside make our new solution now we can calculate one of the very important parameters for this aqueous solution and that is called the molarity or we can say concentration so how can we calculate the molarity molarity is really referring to the strength of the solution it tells you it tells about the strength strength of the solution normally when you prepare your coffee if you put more coffee powder in it you call that it's a strong coffee whereas you put more water in it you make it light similarly when we pre uh, prepare chemical solution in the laboratory uh, we can also make strong and light uh, solutions of the chemical but we don't use the word strong and light um, normally we use the way to explain is called the molarity so what is molarity molarity means molarity is how many moles of solute you have in one liter you can see that talking about the moles of solute and in one liter volume of the solution in one liter volume of the solution so in that case if i know the volume of this solution v and if I know the moles of solute, this is my chemical solute, this is the solute, and this is the solvent here, this is the solvent. So I can simply bring into this equation, which says the moles of solute and divided by the volume of the solution. But normally, uh, the in the laboratory moles cannot be measured the mole the mole cannot be measured there is no uh, tools to measure the mole directly but we know another formula tells that mole is equal to mass of the solute divided by the molar mass so what we do is we bring that mole instead of this mole we bring the mass over molar mass and substitute and we make our final equation make our direct calculation so here you can say that you can calculate the molarity of the solution by mass over molar mass the solute and altogether divided by the volume of the solution in liter so here you can see the volume has to be in liter so if you still want to make your equation very comfortable for you you can directly use it in milliliter. See, you can look at the last equation. Look at the last equation. It is the molarity. The volume is given here in milliliter. So you can use it, whatever the reading directly in milliliter. But in case you have to convert that milliliter to liter, so that's why there is a thousand appearing here. That thousand is really dividing the milliliter to convert it to liter. So uh, we say the equation one here, we can use this equation one as our main equation to measure, calculate the molarity solution. Inshallah, in the next slides, I'm going to explain you how to calculate the molarity. Okay, <clears throat> so today in the practical, the A, the part A is that, we are going to prepare a standard we are going to prepare a standard solution that is our first part we are going to prepare a standard solution now what do you mean by standard when you say standard solution a solution with known molarity when you have a solution and the molarity is known and we call it standard solution and we call it standard solution okay and we call it standard solution for example look at this picture here look at this picture here so here we have prepared a solution uh, at room temperature 20 degree uh, the solute we are using here 
is sodium hydroxide chemical. Another sodium hydroxide chemical. And we are using 10 gram sodium hydroxide chemical. And the total volume of the solution is 100 milliliters. So here the 10 gram will be the mass of the chemical. And the volume 100 will be the V, 100 volt milliliter. This will be the uh, volume of the chemical. This will be the V. And then we want to know one more thing about it. We have to know because we know the chemical here, sodium hydroxide. Using the periodic table information, we can find the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. Okay. So if we know the mass of solute, if we know the molar mass of the solute, and also if we know the volume of the solution, using all this information, we can calculate the molarity of solution using our equation number one that we have discussed before. So the next slide, I will show you how to form this calculation for this particular question. So the question here is clearly telling you about how it says as an example question find the molarity of the standard solution prepared by dissolving 10 gram sodium hydroxychemical into 100 milliliter water and they give you extra information the atomic weight of sodium is 23 Oxygen is 16, hydrogen is 1, and using all this information, we are going to calculate the molarity of this solution. Let's move to the next slide. Now, if we start this calculation now, here you can see that. So, using the we know that we have a molarity equation, molarity is equal the mass of the solute. divided by molar mass of the chemical and divided by the volume of solution in volume of solution in liter this is our equation now in this case you can see here and what are the information that we have in this practical yes the mass is this 10 gram of the chemical that is 10 gram the mass is there and then we have 100 milliliter of this solution that is the volume v v so we have it here so what is remaining is the molar mass v what is remaining is the molar mass mm okay because we know the chemical okay sodium is 23 the atomic weight oxygen is 16 and hydrogen is 1. so if i add all these together it will be equal to 40 gram per mole so that means i know the molar mass and that is going to be molar mass so that i can bring it here so it's a very simple calculation so directly let me substitute and if i say that molarity is equal the mass is 10 by the unit and then divided by the molar mass is 40 gram mole minus one and divided by volume is 100 of course the 100 milliliter you have to convert to liter so you divide it by 1000 so it will become liter so after all you calculate and you see that the unit of gram and g gram cancel so finally you will calculate whatever you divide it and you get the answer here and the unit of molarity will be mole per liter you can find it since we know the molarity of this solution we can call it standard solution you can say that we have prepared a standard
solution. Okay, now you know how to calculate the molarity of a standard solution. Okay, let's proceed. Now, dilution. Dilution is the second part of our practical today. Dilution. You know, dilution we can refer to uh, back to your coffee. You know, when you drink coffee and sometimes very strong, and if you don't like very strong coffee, you will try to add more water to make it light. Same thing in chemistry. Sometimes when we prepare a solution, the molarity of the concentration of the solution is very high, the strong solution, and sometimes we have to reduce its molarity so to make it light. So this is called dilution. See here, it's clearly telling you that what is dilution. A dilution means it is a process by which solution of a lower concentration can be obtained. So lower concentration means the light, light solution. How? By adding, by adding more solvent, by adding more solvent. In fact, when you dilute a solution by adding more solvent, the volume of the solution is increases. But the number of the moles of the solute for solution remains same. What does it mean? See here, when we do the practical here, can you see in the picture here, you are adding water. You are adding water to dilute the solution water dilute the solution so that is going to increase the volume v of the solution but what about the coffee here the amount or the gram or the mole of the coffee the mole of coffee will remain same you're not increasing the coffee you're not decreasing coffee rather you are changing the volume solution by adding only the water the amount of water is changing okay let's move on to the next slide okay what is the formula used to calculate the molarity of a new solution in our real life okay we just do the dilution and we drink the coffee but in chemistry when we prepare a new solution we should know what is its molarity we should be able to prepare a certain molarity solution so that we should know how to calculate it the picture here clearly ends you this so the basic idea here is you can see that uh, first picture is showing you that we have a v1 volume of uh, the solution and the molarity of that solution is M1. We're talking about this strong solution, we say concentrated solution. Then what we do is we are going to add solvent. We are going to add extra solvent. Normally in our laboratory, normally the solvent we use is water. And then we call the process is called dilution. We are making it light, making it light. And at the end of the dilution process, we will get a new solution, and it's a light solution. We call it diluted solution. The diluted solution will have a higher volume, V2. When the volume increases, but the solution becomes light, then the molarity of the new solution will be lower. So we really think the molarity m1 is more than m2 because we make it light however the volume v1 that we take is less after because we add more water the v2 will be higher okay now remember for a given solution we can calculate the mole of the solute in the solution by this equation 
for a given solution. If you multiply the molarity by the volume of the solution, you can calculate the molarity, moles. You can calculate the moles. Now, if we consider what we have done, there is a part for before dilution. Before dilution is this one. And the other one is after dilution. That is this part. So before and after dilution, if you consider, we just change the volume of the solvent. But what about the chemical inside? We did not change the moles. So we say the moles of the solute, the moles of the solute before the dilution is equal to moles of the solute after the dilution. We did not add solute, we did not remove solute. Rather, we only change the volume of solvent. So what we can do, the moles of solute can be calculated from this equation. Already we have explained you. Or molarity multiplied by volume. Therefore, what I can do before dilution, the moles will be equal to M1 multiplied by V1. Because before dilution, we have more M1 molarity and the V1 the volume. So if I multiply M1 and V1, I will get the mole. Similarly, after the dilution, I have a solution with molarity M2 and the volume is V2. So it's going to be M2 multiplied by V2. And this will give you the moles after the solution. But we know that moles after dilution and moles before dilution, they are equal. Therefore, we can simply say that this M2V2 should be equal to M1V1. Therefore, we have produced a new equation, and that is uh, given here. Let's say M1V1 is equal to M2V2. And this is, of course, called dilution law. This is called dilution law. So the dilution law can help us to find the molarity of a new solution. How? Let's say if I know the molarity of a solution before and how much solution I am taking for the dilution and what will be the final volume of a diluted solution V2. If I know M1, V1 and V2, I can calculate the new molarium. Okay, so that is about the dilution theory. Okay, let's move on to the last part of the cycle. And that, okay, that is a dilution question. So that is for easy for you to understand. So here you can see that the question is about the dilution. This is an example question about the dilution. Calculate the molarity of 250 milliliter volume of so sodium hydroxide solution prepared, prepared by diluting 100 milliliter and 0 0.05 m sodium hydroxide solution. Yes, students, here the problem is students, when you read, you should be able to identify the M1 the V1 and the M2 and the V2. If you do not identify them correctly, you will mix up them and then you will end up with the wrong answer. See here, calculate the molarity of 250 milliliter solution. So this is going to be your V2. That is calculate the molarity of the solution. Prepared, it's already prepared. Prepared means at the end by how you prepare it by diluting 100 milliliter so that means you have a v1 is 100 milliliter and the molarity of that solution is 0 0.05 m that is m1 so you know the v1 is 100 m1 is 0 0.005 from that you are going to mix some water and you are going to increase the volume to 250 liter v2 so you can see in the picture it's given nicely 
So this is the before dilution you can see here. This is before dilution and this is after dilution. So M1 0.05 M and the V1 is this. This is related to our dissolution, the concentrated solution. And you are adding water here. You can see that we are adding water here. So because of that, you get a new diluted solution here. And the volume is increased to V2. Final volume is more, 250. But the new molarity of that solution, M2, is not known. That is about after dilution. So what we do, we say that M1, uh, according to our dilution law, M1 V1 is equal M2 V2. So we have to find the M2. We know M1, we know V1, we know V2. So therefore M2 can be found, M2 is equal M1 V1 over V2. Let us substitute all of this one and then you can get the answer for the, so substitute the M1 and the V1 and the V2. So you have the M1 is here, V1 is here and the V2 here. So you can find the M2 and if you find the M2, and your answer, you will get it. And you can see the unit. It is still molarity. The unit of molarity is mole per liter. And if you check your answer, as we discussed that M1 is always bigger than M2 because we make the solution light. You see our M1 was, M1 was 0.05 M. That is this one. Now M2 that we have calculated is 0.02 M. So you can see that M1 is bigger than M2. That is okay. Okay, what's remaining? So that's all about the calculation that we are supposed to explain. Okay. The last part of the theory is about the titration. What is titration? Titration is a volumetric technique. You can see titration is a volumetric technique. When you say volumetric technique, that means mostly you are going to depend on measuring the volume. You're going to depend on measuring the volume. So it's called volume technique. Used to find the molarity of an unknown solution. If you have an unknown solution and you don't know the molarity, so you can find its molarity by doing the titration. Of course, for this, you need a standard solution. So you have a known solution. You want to find its molarity. Of course, you need to have a standard solution. That means molarity of that standard solution is known. So this is what we call the titration by definition. And today in our practical that, we're going to make a form of simple acid-based titration. So the acid that we use is hydrochloric acid, you can see here. And the base we use is sodium hydroxide, NaOH. And this acid and base will be allowed to react in the titration system. So you now the acid and base react to give you salt and the water. Of course, we have to balance the equation. equation. The chemical equation has to be balanced. So when we balance, we get a number here is 1. And the number here is 1. And also all the numbers here will be 1. So in that case, the mole coefficient for the hydrochloric acid is 1. We call it A. And the coefficient for the sodium hydroxide base is 1. We say it is B. This A and B will be needed for a calculation in the titration. Uh, the equation in role used for the titration is called titration law. The equation used is called titration law. So, titration law. Do not mix up this equation with the uh, dilution law. Dilution law means is simply m1 v1 equal to m2 v2 but here it is not that 
here we have here we have m a you can see m a v a over a the a refers to acid so that means this side of the equation is related to the acid and the other side of the equation you can see is m b v b m b v b over e this is related to the base chemical So you know that the sodium hydroxide is the base chemical that we are using. The sodium hydroxide is the base chemical. So that will come here. All the information, HCl is the acid. The information will come here, the acid. So titration law has both acid and base side information. Okay, let's go next. So if you remember the titration that we did in the class, so we use a conical flask. You can see we use a small conical flask. This is conical glass, or we can call it early mayor flask. And then we have a pipette. We have a pipe. This one you can see this is the pipette we have it, and we draw. 20 milliliter you can see the 20 milliliter acid solution that is called that is called uh, sorry sorry that is the volume of acid solution here VA just mark it VA 20 milliliter VA 20 milliliter and of course then we have used a stand and then we use a burette equipment, this one. And we fill the burette with sodium hydroxide solution. It is, sorry, it was not standard. We fill the sodium hydroxide solution, the blue color solution is sodium hydroxide. And we made the initial reading here is zero. Of course, it has scales, it has scales, and the scale goes up to, if you remember, 50. And then what we do, we bring this, our acid solution here, uh, the 20 milliliter acid solution. And of course, we add uh, two drops of indicator. We add two drops indicator. You no, know, the indicator we use phenolphthalein. Just we add here two drops. That helps to identify the color change so that we can find the endpoint. Then we started performing titration and by opening this step, by opening this step. So we started from zero reading and we then, when it comes to certain level here, we got the color change here. And then we got the color change here. So when we observe the color change here, and then we stop and we take the reading that is any here. So this is going to be the initial reading and this is going to be the final reading. So if I want to know the difference, I say final minus initial. Then we repeated this titration three times. So then we again started from this final reading. We went up to another reading. We got another final reading. And then we started another, from this final and we went to take another reading so that's another final reading so basically we have to take in a standard titration three we have to take three let's say this is v1 and this is v2 and this is v3 so we have to find uh, all v1 v2 v3 and we are going to take the average of v and v1 v2 v3 perform our calculation so look at here the the main parameters that we have to know the va here is called the volume of the acid that we have taken in the flower that is normally 20 milliliter ma is the molarity of this acid solution in our practical it was 0 0.05 if you remember this one was 20 milliliter and then VB is 
the average of all these three reading it should be the average the mb is the molarity of the solution that we have filled here and that is question mark we don't know that is question mark. We don't know. our objective here is to find the molarity of mb unknown molarity how we can do it we did this titration and we fill a table so in this burette reading you can see how the burette is red see that when the scale is there you can see this lowest point and that is called the meniscus and the color is changed we have to take that reading okay. according to our practical um, for me when i did the practical i started my practical on the mirror reading zero and i got the color change when it came to 12.5 then i started the second titration my second time this first titration then i started the second time started from 12.5 and i got 24.5 so those who had a time they would have done the third titration maybe starting from 24.5 i'll get this so now what we have to do uh, we have to find uh, these places how we find it so it is given by a formula here that is the volume of the base equal final minus initial so in the first case it is uh, in the first case it is you can see that uh, 12 point let me give erase it okay in the first case at uh, 12.5 this one minus then this zero is going to be 12.5 and the second case 24.5 minus 12.5 it is 12.0 and the third case also you can find it it's okay finally what we do is we take this reading for example in this case i think it looks like well 11 11.9 something so, okay so now what we do is we have to take the average of uh, these readings normally standard ways to take the average of the last two reading and write it here so it's going to be in this case 12.0 plus 11.9 divided by 2 that answer will come anyway if i remember with the practical we did not have much time those who took in our practical as only one reading maybe you can use this reading as our bb or if you have taken two readings so you will take both this reading and take the average and calculate the vp take it for calculation and then last part i'll show you how to use the equation of the titration law so that is the titration law so it says the ma multiplied by va divided by a is equal to mb multiplied by vb divided by b so in this case uh, we know all the parameters in our titration except except uh, the molarity of the base so therefore what we do is so i know the molarity of the acid i know the volume of acid i know the volume of uh, base and the a and b the molar uh, mole coefficient from the equation i have to find the mb so what i do i just rearrange the equation the mb will be equal to ma multiplied by va over vb in our practical see that this is a a is equal to one and this is b b is equal to one so a is equal to one b is equal to one so no need to write it again so now once i know the ma i will write it here it is uh, here that is the molarity of the acid in our case it was 0 0.05 m and here volume of acid we took 20 milliliter and then divided by the volume of the base and that is the average so that is the volume average 
and then you will get the answer and the unit will be mole per liter so you can find the molarity of the base so the titration help us to find the molarity of this unknown solution this mb is called the unknown solution molarity so now we have found it now we have found it and this is called titration um, these were the equipments that we use in our practical if you remember the digital balance beaker and the volumetric all this inshallah you can refer to the lab manual you can find their names and then you will know uh, about them and basically the safety issue uh, uh, normal ppe we use the issues the load and the safety glass and in addition we use uh, gloves you know the gloves is to protect our hand you know use acid and base in the practical so we must protect our skin and also we use a pipette filler so you know that we want to take solution to the pipette uh, draw the solution into the pipette we don't use the mouth we use the pipette filler for safety reasons so that it is another safety item we use in our practical and hope that is the end of the, of the slide Uh, let me move on to okay my dear students this is all about the theory part of this practical and then i will also upload and related uh, video clips and to show you how to perform your uh, reports okay just to show you the report just very quickly you can see your report so here what you have to do is so the part a the mass of sodium hydroxide chemical that we have taken from the mesan the balance you have to record it here in gram and the molar mass of sodium hydroxide if you remember molar mass uh, naoh from the periodic table 23 and 16 and this is one we add all these and then we add it here and the volume of sodium hydroxide solution we prepare in our standard solution if i remember it was 100 milliliter something please read your procedure and fill it and then what you do is you go for calculation in the calculation of the molarity of solution a so the mass of the solute is known from mesan and the molar mass is known and the volume in milliliter be careful here if we are using this equation the volume has to be in milliliter and because you have a thousand here that will take care of converting liter and then you will get your answer here and the molarity of solution a you will get it in mole per liter and let's go to the second part. yes then the dilution you did the dilution if you remember the second part of our practical to prepare a solution b so we took solution a so that the molarity of solution a multiplied by and we took a solution a maybe 50 milliliter or 20 milliliter i cannot remember so that whatever the solution you take from a mava is equal to and dilution means you add added water to prepare a new solution so the new solution is mb and then you don't know the molarity and you prepare new solution to v b that is almost 100 if i remember so you ma you know the va you know the vb so you calculate the mb is equal to m1 sorry m a v a over v. and it will be uh, you will get the answer more uh, later please refer to the procedure to know exact values that you have taken and the last part of course the titration table Normally, we started the practical from zero, the bureau of reading, and in my case, it was 12.5. Those who just uh, had enough time to take only one reading, so 12.5 minus zero, it's going to be 12.5. And this is the volume of the base. You will directly take it for your reading. In my case, I was able to do the two titrations. So then second titration, I started from 12.5. I got, if I remember, 24.5. My reading was 12.0 because this one minus that one. 
So in that case, I have to take the average of uh, these two reading, average of these two reading in here, and then it is uh, 12.25, and that is my volume of the case in my case. So then I will use the uh, titration law given here. This is the titration law. Find uh, molarity of the MB. Remember that the more coefficient a is equal to one b is equal to one because it is a hydrochloric acid react with sodium hydroxide one to one so therefore our equation comes like m a v a equal m b b b and i know m a i know v a i know v b so the m b is to be calculated so m b will be equal to m a v a over m uh, v b so MA is the first solution we prepared and we know the molarity of it. VA is the 20 milliliter of acid solution we took uh, using the packet. And the VB is the average that we have on the uh, table above. So you will calculate this value and it will give you the answer here and the unit will be molecule. That's all about the report and hope uh, you can use this information to complete uh, your packet. Uh, inshallah and if you have any other questions please you may ask otherwise i'll stop here